right you join us on the m4 on a fairly grisly december day in lockdown where are we going we are going to get a new car right so we are getting an electric car so that's a bit of a change it's not four-wheel drive it's an electric car all will be revealed so quite interesting so obviously the uk government have announced that from 2030 the sale of petrol and diesel cars is going to be banned in the uk so there is going to be a book a big push over the next few years to go towards electric and that will inevitably move across into land rover and four-wheel drive and pickups um, and obviously there are electric pickups already available so we're going we're going to pick up our new car you're going to join us as we as we pick up the new car we're going to have a look around it because obviously in lockdown we've got to pick it up remotely there's no contact it's a no contact pickup so that's going to be interesting um, and it also a lot of people have been asking about the Ineos um, and I admire what Ineos are trying to do but I think they've got an even tougher job now because now they've got to um, they've now got to launch a car they haven't even got a factory ready yet they've got to launch a car and they've only got 10 years to to make their money off this car and they haven't even got a factory so I think that's put a lot more pressure on Ineos and that'll be interesting to see how that plays out so all these things relate to Land Rovers and stuff so right here we go we're getting off the M4 now and we will join you again do you want to have a look at the road we'll have a look again as we as we go and find where apparently we've got to pick it up from a car park somewhere we've got to pick it up from a shopping shopping center car parks this is all going to be a bit weird but you can join us and we'll we'll see how it goes to the camera right what's it doing now that, yeah but now is it counting up right there we go we've arrived so we've got to go and have a look and see if we've got a electric car waiting for us so apparently it ends in ukd and i think most people are already working out it's a Let's have a look. So it's not any of those. Ah, there we go. There it is. So this is our new Tesla Model 3. So in white, so it's the cheapest Tesla you can buy. So this is the brand new. Now it's, I got a bit geeky. I've read a few things. So this is the what, they call the refresh model so tesla don't seem to launch new models but they've got a refresh and apparently it's got the black door handles and apparently it's got an electric boot opener so we've just gone for the base model the standard get into electric car so this is the the cheapest model so i guess we need to give it a look over and check it's all okay now we did buy it as being in stock on the website and so we thought we won't wait but then it, it turned out not quite to be in stock now um, because it was in transit then when we ordered it so there we go so it all looks all looks to be i guess we ought to check it hasn't got any damage on it right. So it all looks, all looks there. So yes, the standard. Now, one of the reasons we bought the Tesla Model 3 was I actually looked at efficiency for electric cars and that's how many miles it will do for a kilowatt of energy of charge. And the Tesla beat even the smaller cars like the BMW i3. I thought the i3 would be, would be a good job for what we need. But um, no, the, the Tesla has better efficiency and I guess it must have more technology with the regenerative braking and stuff. So apparently it is better and I'll put some figures on the screen. So we are going to grab the keys now. I am driving the Defender back and we'll get someone else to drive to drive the Tesla. Have well, they got a damaged front number plate? Look at that. See there, that they, they've smudged the front front here is all looks like it's damaged there so I might have a word with them about that see what they say about that another thing I've noticed is this there seems to be a scuff down the door here so you see down the door I don't know if it'll catch it on the camera but that looks scuffed like it's been opened into something 
that doesn't look good. It might just be where they've removed the transportation film, actually, because it, it's here and it'd be tricky to scuff here because it's inside. But I would have thought they could have given that a clean for us. Let me see what the other doors are like. Let's see. Well, the doors look fine. There we go. So we're doing the handover now, but there's the interior, the black leather. Right, we got some. We've got the later model. We've got the electric. I'll be the envy of all Model Three owners of the older type. It now comes with an electric tailgate release. Apparently, that's that's the that's cool. A little bit. So there we go. So we're going to drive this home, going back to work, and uh, show everyone because it's a surprise. No one else at work knows. So we'll we'll get some feedback. We'll get some feedback from driving it. What are we going to do with it? We're not sure yet. We'll do some project stuff to it. We'll we've got some accessories coming for it already. So we are going to try and it's new for us. We're going to try and dip into this um, new electric world and see what see what we can find. All right, there we go. We've got it. So now we have two white cars. Then so we've got the. We we'll have to think of a name for the new one. Actually, we've got a private number plate coming. I'll, I'll show you that. That might be back at the warehouse when we get back to the warehouse. So we've just went for a little drive around the block. It's just like driving a, a, a sort of Dodgem's car. You just press go and stop, and we're there. But that's looking fairly neat. We like. We like that. So we will drive, we will do some videos on how to use the basic stuff. Like everything, we're not experts on it, but we'll we'll see what we find. I found one slightly annoying thing already on the mirror adjustment, but I'll go through some videos, things that things that we find cool, things that we find not so cool. Um, yeah, and we'll see you back at the warehouse. Right, we've got it we've got it home, we've got it back to work, but we've broken it already. I got a deja vu feeling. It's a bit like the old defender, isn't it, Gary? But look what on the boot, there was a, a switch here to open the boot, but it's it's all sort of disappeared. It's gone in somewhere. Let me, I can still open the boot. If you come in here and I'll grab the camera, Gary. <laughs> it's all quite trick. All of you with a Tesla will know this, but it's all quite exciting for me. So you get a little icon here of the car. And then if I want to open the boot, I can press this. And we've got the power tailgate on here as I was showing you earlier. So it all opens fine and I can close it. I can close it here. It's not a big deal, but but there, there, there seems to be some bit of flap something or something. It's all sort of disappeared up in there. So I'm gonna have to get onto Tesla service or have a look myself. But yeah, we've broken, we broke the Tesla on, people think I've done that on purpose for YouTube views. I can assure you I haven't. I only meant to open the boot and it's not really, Oh, what's that? Condensation? We've got a bit of condensation in the lights, have we? There is a little bit. Yeah, I noticed it a second ago. Yeah, I wonder if I will. It'll either get worse or it'll get better, won't it? Um, we'll watch that. But no, I mean, it's it's not minus the boss's car, isn't it, Gary? <laughs> um, so, um, but the drive, she says, is fantastic. Um, so she's happy. She's driven it home, driven it back to work here. Um, and it's looking good. I'm going to be in trouble now for breaking it. Um, Right, let's have a, we'll have some more videos, but we're running out of light today. So we'll have a play with it. Let us know what sort of videos you want. I thought about doing like beginner's guide because that's what I'm going through now is just the basics, how to pair your phone, how to open and close the tailgate, how the doors work. Um, it's tricky because I'm not a Tesla expert, but sometimes it's good if you do things as you discover them because then if you've borrowed a Tesla or hired a Tesla, you just want to know the 10 basic things, how to open the charger, how to plug it in, how to pay your phone, um, that sort of stuff. So more Tesla videos to come. Selected reverse. And as you can see, this right hand rear camera has got a fault, it's not, so we've got the front camera, we've got sorry, the rear camera, we've got the left camera, but we haven't got the right camera. So we've a day old and we've lost, well I don't think, I don't know if we've ever had it, um, 
so we've got it and it, this, the system does know there's a failure if I go on to the, the car button here and then if I go into service it tells you of any notifications or warnings that have come up so if I go into notifications here um, it's got yeah this is it's I think this is it it's saying autopilot cameras unavailable uh, it may be restored on the next drive but I can assure you it hasn't been um, so that's another thing we need to get sorted so we're on day one and we've got the boot lock broken and the right hand camera is not working So one of the problems we've got is with the app, it keeps doing this updating, updated yesterday and it keeps whirring round. I mean, it actually works, it's doing something. I can lock and unlock the car if I wanted, I'm sat in it, so obviously it's not letting me. But um, yeah, it's just got this constant whirring. Now I don't know if that's supposed to be happening or or not. Um, but has it got our charge rate? Let's, let's have a look if we can see. So yeah, if you look at the range, it's telling me I've got 122 miles, which, was what I had this morning but as you can see we've been driving we've got 158 miles um, so it's not really it, it's got itself all in a little bit of a pickle which is a bit of a shame we're hoping the Tesla would be the software king so maybe we're doing something wrong who knows we will investigate further close the app down and open it again and it has now got it correct and we've got the correct range but it completely stuck and we've got rid of that updated yesterday thing but that was that's been there for a few hours so, and it was weird because it was connected to the car and it would unlock and lock the car. So it's connected, but I'm um, not there. But hopefully that's a, a teething issue. Right, we're going to do some more Tesla bits and pieces. It's a bit of a mumble jumbled video. Sorry about that, but it's, it's our style. Look, I've got some new number plates. Right, see if you can work out what is. Because if you've got a Tesla, you've either got to like have a beard or you've got to have like some sort of number plate thing going on. So here we go, this is my environmentalist number plate, you see. Here's you, if you've got to explain the number plate, it's pretty bad, isn't it, Tyler? Probably, yeah. Probably. but it's kind of, it's you, CO2, bad. So you, carbon dioxide, bad. So I can drive my Tesla around feeling all good about myself because actually our car is solar powered because on the roof up there somewhere, we have got 50 kilowatts of solar power. So we are plugging the Tesla in to the charging at work, which brings us on to my next thing. I was having a play around. Let me put my number plates down, Tyler. There you go, that's gonna look brilliant. Right, so let's have a look. So obviously these electric cars need charging. I'll just show you this. So this is how we get in. Put that, all the mirrors come out. And then you've got to press your little door handles and it, it opens. So if we jump in, Tyler, you can lean over this way probably. Oh no, jump around the other side. Right, so join us in our car. It's nice and warm, isn't it, Tyler? It's very warm. Um, so you can see we have 157 miles left on our little, and if I touch that, it brings up our screen. So we are now gonna charge it. I'll go through some of the things. Now, I'm not a Tesla expert. I'm new to this whole electric car thing. So I'm just doing these, these observations as, as we discover them. And so I'm sharing it with you, not as an expert, just on my voyage of discovery of Tesla ownership and as you can see it's a little bit rocky already but there's a pretty cool thing so let's go outside now and have a look at the charger so we've got 150 them um, and then we can we'll, we'll have a look at the charging but we could open it automatically but we'll, we'll do it from the back right okay let's jump around the back and have a look so with our new shiny Tesla we got one of these charging leads and this is a type 2 lead so you need to get yourself a type 2 charging port so there we go so this is the wall side that goes in the wall charger and this is the car side that goes in the car I'm going to put that in the car in a minute right be careful there is a type 1 charging lead so I thought I'd done really well and had this car charging lead already installed but that won't fit in my car because it needs to look like actually sorry it needs to look like that so this one is type one this one is type two there are two types there's probably loads but <laughs> there's two types that i've stumbled across right so 
Now, obviously, I think the safest way of charging your car is to put this, this end in because it's all dead, right? And we'll put that end in last. So you get this and you can push that. Woo! It's quite, cool, it? it quite cool. You've not seen this, have you, no. Tyler? No, right. And then we take this off. And right now, so this is our little Tesla logo. And it's, is that white or blue, Tyler? White. White. We're going to go for white. Right, and we plug that in. Now, I don't think that's... Ooh. Right, so it's, it's happy. Now, I think it may have locked, I'm not sure. It made a little noise. So now I can plug this in to here. Now, all right, uh, like that. now, that has now swatched to green and that has started charging. So let's have a look as this logo here change color now. So we have a sort of pulsing green color now. Green. And then if you jump around and have a look at the screen now, it should start to tell us what we're charging. <laughs> so, you can see it's charging and it's going to take four hours to charge. And the interesting thing is this is the, the charging current here. Now, I, it was on five before, which I think is the default for the house plug. Because obviously you can plug it into a three pin house plug. Um, but the charger I've got there is giving us 16 amps. Um, and this is the rate at which it's charging. So for every hour I'm plugged in, I'm going to gain 12 miles of range. So um, it's going to take four hours, even on this 16 amp supply, to charge. Now, yeah, close the door, Tyler. I thought, I thought I'd be clever. I thought, let me see if I can drive off without the... But it's going to enable to drive. Look, I'm, I'm pressing the brake pedal and I, I want to go into drive which on the Tesla, Tyler, you've got to move that down and it changes you in from reverse neutral drive and, and oh, you press it to go to pump. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, so it's, it's clever enough not, because you could see that happening, couldn't you? Yeah. You're in a hurry, your car's charged, bam, you're in drive off. <laughs> um, so, which I think you can drive off from a petrol pump with the thing still in. So it's, it's kind of cleverer than petrol, right. But then if you come to disconnect it, this is where I've got a bit puzzled and I might need some of you out there who watch these videos to give me some advice on this. So let me go, let me go and explain the problem. Let's jump outside. Right, so I'm, I'm all connected up. I've, I, wanna, I wanna stop charging, I wanna go. So if I try and pull that out, it's, it's locked. It's not letting me have it. Now I think, well, that's clever because this cable is live. So by not letting me pull it out, it's quite clever. It's not letting me expose those pins. So well, that's fine, that's fine. So I can take this end here and I can pull this out, right? And that's now disconnected that. And then if I come over here now, I can, it's gone to the white mode and it's, I can pull that out. Now, what puzzled me was, what the other charger we've got round the front is on a tethered lead. So it's, it's like this where it sits on the wall and the lead is hardwired in. Um, and in many ways, this is a better idea because if you think about it, this blue lead we've got here has got a plug at the wall end. And whenever you've got a plug, you've got potential for resistance and water ingress and stuff. So I've got two plugs, right? But if you have a tethered lead, it's hardwired in, there's no plugging. So in many ways, a tethered lead is better. No one can steal your lead. It's hooked up there all the time and you've only got one mating plug. So I thought, well, how would it work? So let's pretend this is a tethered lead, right? So we've put it in and it's in and it will probably start charging the car now. Is it gonna go to green? Yeah, it's gone to green. It's charging the car, right? It's pulsing, right? So let's pretend this is a tethered lead, right? Now I can pretend to kill the power here because I can press this button here, right? And I can kill the power. So I've totally killed the power here. So this should be like a dead cable. So hopefully my Tesla will let me have my, unplug my car if it's a tethered setup, but it won't, it won't give you your, so I'm not sure on a tethered, li if we'd have plugged it into that one at the front, Tyler, that's tethered, will I, would I ever be able to get my car back again? I'm like, because this the, the lead's dead. So I think I'm doing something wrong. I think I'm overthinking it, but I sort of panic myself that my Tesla's going to be permanently joined to my warehouse if I use a tethered lead. Mystery.
Right, so let's do some other observations. Now, apparently you have to be careful on the internet if you say things against Teslas. Now, I am not making anything up. Any of these criticisms are more observations. We actually love our new Tesla and we love the fact it's electric. We love the eco thing. Even though I've got my little number plate, it is a serious issue. So don't take any of these comments wrong. It's just, I'm an engineer and I just like to look at things and how they're built. And so I'm not trying to slate anyone. Little preface, right. But here are some things, let's discuss them, right. This rear door, Tyler. So Tyler hasn't looked at this. As you see this line come along here, Tyler, can you see the door does not match there? Can you see the rear door is lower? And can you see on this rubber trim at the top, can you see how these two do not line up? Yeah. Yeah. So if we go and look around the other side, avoiding the charging cable, and let's have a look. I think the door on that side is not fitted correctly because this side seems to line up a lot better to me. And this line on the car here seems to work to me. What do you think? I agree, right. There's another thing. It looks like they're made for US style number plates and it looks like they've sort of jammed a sort of UK number plate carrier on the top. If you look from the side there, it's all a bit sort of, I don't know, it all there's like big gaps around it all. It would be nice. I mean, there's like one number plate holder and another. I don't know if there's even a third one, something else. And it'd be nice if they had a solid, fixed number plate holder. I think I'm not a big fan of all this. What are you thinking, Tyler? No. No, I don't know what that's all about. Right, let's have a look at the front number plates. It's the same deal, but I think it's more obvious on the front because as you look down, they clearly got a different size number plate holder that was perhaps suited to American plates and they sort of just jammed this sort of UK one on the front that they scratched. Do you see that tide of them? I picked it up like that. It's sort of You have to guess what the middle is. And like they can't see the Tesla Motors UK sign either. Right. Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler, yeah. We'll have to do you a little sticker. <laughs> right. Um, so there's just a few little observations, some little niggles, but generally the car is is a pretty smart, it's a smart, I actually quite like the wheels. So these black wheels look good. I like the overall black. I'm wondering about putting some black, black mirror covers on here. And then we'd have this sort of whole area here, black. We've got some bits and pieces coming for the Tesla. So we'll try and do our own little bits and pieces as we go. But there we go, that's my sort of, oh, we'll do a little bit more video and we'll have a discuss, we'll go inside in the warm and we'll discuss about our buying experience when we bought the Tesla, when we ordered it, how long it said it would come, how long it actually took to come. And we will also talk about a bit more about why we chose a Tesla, what were our options buying an electric car um, and why did we go for the Tesla? So let's get in the warm and talk about that. So young Tyler has just asked me, said, can I have a peek at the engine? No, no, I know it's not an engine, but the motor. Well, I think it's kind of tricky to look at the motor. They're in the back under the floor. Um, it'd be about trying to look at a petrol tank on a, on a normal conventional car. But he said, well, what's in the front then? And the front, I was gonna teach you a new word here. And this is a word I didn't know till a couple of weeks ago. We're gonna look in the front. Right, because it's not a trunk, it's a front trunk. So anyone in Tesla land knows the word frunk. It's one of those words you just have to add to your vocabulary when you own it. So, right, to open the frunk, we press the screen here and we open and that has boined open. So let's go and look in the frunk, shall we? So as we go in the, the front, one thing that they've really done a good job on this sort of facelift, uplift, they've got a proper word for it, refresh, I think is the Tesla terminology for the new thing. They've gone with black handles, black window trim, um, loads more black trim inside, which is good, I like it. But they've left the chromey, blingy sort of Tesla. I think I'd like a black Tesla on the front. So there we go. Oh, look at that gas. That's quite cool. We've got gas springs on, the, on there, Tyler. There is your frunk. There you go. So that is the first time you've looked in a frunk. We've got a, we've got a light. We have a tow hook. Oh, that's what's that? Got? Oh, no. Yeah, this is the thing, Tyler. So apparently under US legislation, apparently it's popular to throw children and things in, <laughs> in 
boots. So, so, so under US law, and it's not unreasonable, I know I'm joking, um, but you have to have a way of releasing. So if you kidnap someone, let's face it, we're, never gonna, we're never gonna kidnap you, are we, Tyler, and get you in there. Apparently, if you're kidnapped and you're put in the boot, this will illuminate. Does it stay illuminated, Tyler? We're gonna have to get a chance. But, to find gonna, no, no, can you leave the camera there? Can you prop the camera up? And let's, let's close the, because it's like the gold question, Tyler. We'll have to hope that, has that got it? Oh, when you shut the fridge door, does the light go off, Tyler? We'll never know. We'll never know. Right, we are now going to, so viewers, excuse us as we trap you in the trunk. You'll have to tell us, does the, does the emergency exit light stay on? Right, I'm, going, I'm shutting you in. We're back, we're back. Are you okay in there? Did, did the light stay on? We'll have to watch our own video to find out. Grab the camera, Tyler. Right, so there you go, Tyler. There's the trunk. You can have a look in the trunk if you want. Oh, it, it is, it's all a bit funny, Shine. It's much the same, it's got a good big boot on it. Anyway, I am getting cold now, Tyler. Let's go inside. Right, back in the warm, back in the workshop. Right, trying to try and cover a few things. So why did we go for a Tesla? Um, gonna also talk about the delivery schedule and the ordering process we went through, the price we paid for it. And lastly, I'm gonna try and work out or discuss what I'm gonna do about these problems we've got with the car. Right, so let's start. Why did I order a Tesla? Now, um, so our commute for where we work is is about five miles. So buying a Tesla or an electric car generally seemed a bit silly because of the distance we travel is fairly small. Obviously we visit family and friends and go to the shops, but our major commute is pretty small. So the money we'd be saving on fuel and the environmental benefit we would offer was not great. So we held off a bit, but I think it's one of those things where the more people that adopt it for whatever mileage you do, the better it is. Um, and so initially I thought, well, we don't need a big car. I mean, we don't do a lot of big trips where we need a big car. Um, and my daughter's 18, she can drive now. So we're finding less and less people in the cars. So we didn't need a big car. So my initial thing was let's get a small car because if you have a small car that weighs less then your efficiency should be better uh, force equals mass times acceleration small lightweight that will do the job and we looked at the bmw i3 and i thought that's brilliant it's it's like a carbon fiber body and i love that and it's it's a buzzy little design and we could get four of us in if we needed it but for most of the time a couple of us buzzing around that that'll be the job and that's got to be good a good fuel economy. Now, fuel economy is obviously measured in miles per kilowatt. Is it per kilowatt or per kilowatt hour? Probably, because that's a form of energy. So, um, but you get my point. Then when we looked it up, I was thinking, right, okay, so which is the, maybe even a little electric smart car. But I looked up the data and the, the Tesla was actually given the best fuel economy. Um, which is crazy, and I think that's because of the regenerative baking, the battery technology, the aerodynamics, all these things that seem to make the Tesla better even than a tiny little smart car, which, which is incredible and a real tribute to Tesla. So we also looked at the depreciation. I mean, roughly speaking, a BMW nicely specced i3S would be about £35,000. The Tesla's only £5,000 more and it's faster, bigger, more fuel efficient, it's got more features. So I was thinking, I like, know oh I wanted to go small, but I'm actually questioning. And in the end, every time we sort of went around the loop and I thought, like, we don't really want a Tesla, it's, it's maybe bigger than we need, but it, it all kept leading back to Tesla. And that is a tribute to Teslas. Whichever measure you seem to be able to put up, the Tesla seems to somehow find its way coming to the top of your list. So we bit the bullet and we that is why we bought the Tesla. And we bought the cheapest Tesla we could buy. So we didn't want any, I mean, they're well-spected as it is. We didn't care about anything too much color or anything. So we 
bought the cheapest Tesla, you can see the price. I'll put the price on the screen in a minute. Right, so that is why we bought a Tesla. Obviously, it's, there's more to buying a car, it's emotional stuff on that, but that's the basic reason. Right, okay, so the ordering process, well, I've got some notes here. So we ordered the car on the 31st of October. Now we'll put the screenshot up on the screen now so you can see it. And they have a thing, they have cars available in stock. There's a little tab at the top of the website. So we thought, well, yeah, we're ready. We're gonna, let's order one. They've got them in stock. And as we're not fussy, we don't care what color it is, we can go ahead and order one. So we went ahead and it said, and there was some in transit. If you look at the screenshot, you'll see that the one on the right of the screenshot said it's in transit, where the one in the middle, the one we ordered, says it was in London, less than 50 miles, new car, um, in stock now so we thought well, well we'll go for that um, so we placed our order on the 31st of October hoping to get it relatively quickly um, but the uh, delivery date it wasn't until the 12th of November that the delivery date was confirmed and it was confirmed to be the 4th of December so that was a fair few weeks from the original the end of October um, but then on the 30th of November the delivery the date was delayed until the 9th of December. Um, and in that time, it was becoming clear that the car wasn't really in London like it originally said. Now, we haven't really, uh, it doesn't mind. I was in no particular hurry for the car. Um, and it, I do think we've done well because they've, at the same time we ordered, they announced this refresh. So I think they may well, I don't know if there was a car in London at the time or whether the car we've got was the car in London or whether they have given us the refresh car. Although the pictures, if you look at the picture when I ordered it, it does show the car with the black door handles, which is the refresh version. So it certainly shows the visuals of the refresh. So anyway, that's just a bit of doing with, um, with the ordering process. Right, so what are we gonna do, Tyler, with this, with this broken Tesla? We've got a camera out, we've got a rear boot. Now, my nearest dealer's down in Bristol, which is about, I mean, is it about 100 miles to Bristol? Might be a little bit less than that, but by the time I've gone there and got back, um, we're gonna be looking at possibly 200 mile round trip. So. For the rear boot catch, I think we ought to look at fixing that ourselves. I think we're allowed to look at a car. I mean, well, am I going to impact my warranty? I don't know, but I'm sure if I just disassemble it gently and record what I do. Um, so it'd be interesting, and I'd like to look at the design. What's failed? Is it, have we been brutal with it? Is it a design or a construction problem? The rear camera also, I would like to check is plugged in. Now we don't know if the camera worked when we collected it um, because we didn't put it in reverse and we weren't really sure what we're doing. We had the contactless handover. So um, not sure why that rear camera on the right hand side. We will certainly report the faults to Tesla and actually it'll be interesting to see what the process is. Um, we'll report them through the app as the app's working now so we can report it through the app. So we'll report the faults to Tesla and we'll see what their response is and what the timing and what their response is. But I think in parallel, we'll try and get it in the workshop and have a little look. Right, that is, uh, that's our first day of Tesla ownership. If there's any more videos you'd like us to do on the Tesla, I was gonna start to do some sort of basic functionality as we drive it. Again, we're not experts on Teslas, we're new to all this. If you want an expert review of Teslas, then there's some really cool YouTube channels for that. But this is more like a voyage of discovery. So that's the start of it. Keep watching, let us know what you'd like to see and have a good day.